my friends and welcome back to Skyrim Mod Showcases presented by yours truly, just a humble graduate of the Bard's College. Is everyone already deep in the world of Starfield? I haven't yet gotten the game myself, but I'm excited for those who get to play. Space shenanigans aside, today's theme is all about enhancing Skyrim's landscape with a hand-picked collection of brand new or hidden gem mods that make the province more interesting to travel in. I know this is what we need after years of playing this game, and I also know you're itching to see what I got in store for you today, so let's jump right into the first showcase. The first mod is also the most recent, released just a week ago, and probably doesn't count as a hidden gem since a lot of people, including me, rightfully adore it. This is Thaldur's Iverstead. Iverstead is a small town in the Rift Hold, familiar for those who are willing to do the dangerous hike to the throat of the world. This mod changes Iverstead completely from being just a small village with a couple of farmhouses and a mill into a livelier hamlet, with its own town square, chapel, cemetery and a guard tower, in addition to new shops. The overhauled town is overlooked by the center of attention, a statue of Mara, the goddess of love, which looks beautiful under the autumn sun. The new buildings aren't just for show. They're inhabited by new NPCs living in Iverstead, such as a baker, a general goods merchant, an orc blacksmith, a priest of Mara, and a grave digger, all with appropriate daily routines around the town. The new inhabitants aren't mute either, they're equipped with reused dialogue from the game, and the priest of the town has unique AI-generated voice lines, deepening his character. You might have already admired these renewed buildings. They're actually from the amazing cities of the north, and the mod also makes use of other assets for this project in a creative way. The existing interiors are recreated to match the new buildings and the atmosphere of the town. And the new buildings interiors are clean, an honorable mention to the chapel and this particular house that belongs to the gravedigger. All this combined together, Iverstead is completely reborn, a joy to visit and feel super cozy in addition to finally looking truly beautiful. Now, all we need to do here is to solve the mystery of the haunting of Shroud Hearth Barrow. Next mod to enhance the landscape of Skyrim is definitely a true hidden gem. There are forts all across the province, used as military bases, or most often they're occupied by bandits or vampires. Seems like the Jarls really don't care about these buildings, as they're pretty much always overrun. So the mod in question changes the appearance of these forts. This is Natural Forts of Skyrim. This mod makes these military forts proper castle-like, with adding more exterior walls and new towers. The medieval fantasy aesthetic gets a huge buff with this mod installed, which is amazing if you're into that sort of stuff. I know I am, and not only the fantasy aspect of it, but of course the historical as well. Natural Forts of Skyrim greatly enhances the atmosphere, making these forts look absolutely beautiful, even when seen from far away, especially when it's foggy weather, so epic and so mystical works with a dark fantasy mod list perfectly as well, as you might imagine. All of the forts get enhanced by this mod, changing their look for the better. It's crazy how I have seen no one talk about this mod, it's been hidden from sight for too long. If you decide on getting this one, remember to download the LOD files and generate Dindalod if you want to avoid the pesky poppins. Let me know in the comments if you already knew of this mod, and if you didn't, let me know if I maybe succeeded in convincing you. Then let us continue on to the next mod, or maybe more like the next mod collection. Northern Scenery is a series of mods that aim to enhance the landscapes of Skyrim by overhauling the points of interest in the wilderness, such as the Nordic ruins. This mod draws inspiration from the concept art of Skyrim, as well as from the real world. Let's take a look at the overhauled locations one by one, each a mod of its own. 
First, we have the newest mod in the series, which overhauls the exterior of Iskramor's tomb, which in vanilla was just a simple hole-in-the-ground type of ruin where you delve during the companion's questline. Now with the mod, the exterior looks grand. There are multiple shipwrecks around the area, even on top of the ruins entrance, which itself is also monumental now. There is an old broken dock and ruined monuments next to the stairway. Ironbind Barrow, on the other hand, wasn't that minimalistic to begin with. Actually, it's quite pronounced with all these structures surrounding it, but the mod does a great deal on this small Nordic ruin as well. Now the ruin's exterior is vastly extended, they reach the road next to Nightgate Inn, and all the stone pillars can be seen from far away because they are so huge. I especially love the detail of these swords etched in the rock. Ansilvund was built by a man to honor his late love, and when completing the related quest, you can help them both to finally get the rest they deserve. The mod adds little things, organic and man-made, to make the place seem more interesting and out of the ordinary. The tower is also included in this overhaul, adding some fitting objects inside of it. Now the place is notably spookier. The cave entrance and the campsite at Angarwund in the rift gets enhanced in the same fashion as Ansilvund did. It's all about the added details that blend in the environment, such as skulls and different items left by previous campers. Now the area looks like people have been utilizing it, but quickly it's been abandoned. Reasons might be the horrors of the Nordic ruin, the civil war or, you know, dragons. Next we have Bleak Falls Barrow. I know a lot of people think that the design of the tomb is already perfect as is, iconic even, but we shall take a look at this mod either way. I'm very happy to see how this mod doesn't do anything drastic or add anything unnecessary. On the contrary, the added monuments only add on to the atmosphere of this ancient temple. It makes it feel even more grand, age-old and respectable with only small tweaks. The last, but absolutely not least, Northern Scenery mod does changes to the Vitron Tundra area. This is so great for adding that little bit of intrigue and mystery to the flat tundra landscape, as well as, in my case, conveniently hiding the ugly details in the distance. These ruins look simply epic, and I feel like this mod in the series of Northern Scenery is especially harshly underrated. All in all, Northern Scenery makes the landscape of Skyrim, especially the surroundings and entrances of Nordic ruins, more interesting with added details. It also makes them really imposing and have more of a sense of importance in the world, while being faded away with time. Again, these mods borrow assets from the mod Northern Roads, which draws the conclusion that together they look super good and give the Skyrim environment a fine makeover. Alright, the next mod is a little bit different in nature compared to what we've already seen in this video, but bear with me, I think you might like it. Clouds All Over All in One is an environmental mod that adds separate cloud formations to different places of interest in Skyrim. For example, you can find these clouds, of course, hovering at the Cloud District, now true to its name, at Markarth's mountain-carved cityscape and the famous College of Winterhold, which miraculously survived the Great Collapse. There are also added cloud formations at the Dragon Lairs, High Rothgar and Solitude, to name a few. These fluffy clouds reflect the time of the day and the weather, making them appear more natural. They also move around, they cycle, and they disappear. The mod creator promises this mod has no performance impact, and you don't have to generate LOD for the clouds. The mod is also compatible with any weather mods or mods that add fog or mist. Whether these cloud formations could or couldn't happen in the real world or in Skyrim no less, I personally don't care. They look simply awesome, realism tossed aside, kind of magical and really just ethereal. Clouds All Over is such a creative mod and I highly recommend it if you want to add some fun flair around the key places of the province or take some awesome screenshots. 
The next mod on the list is absolutely criminally underrated or somehow there is just an alternative that people use that I don't yet know about or both. Quaint Borders does a clean and minimalist overhaul to Falkreath, Riften and Windhelm province borders to Hammerfell and Borrowind. The border with Hammerfell is the most minimalistic of the three overhauls, as is suggested that it's mostly left alone, uncared for by the Jarl of Falkreath. There are some added wolves roaming the area, which have reaped some havoc around the border and got these people and a horse killed. There is a unique scimitar which you can loot from one of the red guards, and after getting rid of the wolves, you can spend a night here by the simple campsite. The northeastern border to Morrowind, on the other hand, was a site for a skirmish and then left abandoned, which can be observed from the surroundings. On the side of Skyrim, in the Fort Ruin, there are camping gear for spending the night and a lot of different workbenches for crafting and smithing. On the Morrowind side, there is a trading or immigration post and stable stalls and a building, all abandoned who knows how much time ago, but by the looks of this camp, looks like the place is still used by refugees. The southeastern border to Morrowind is different. It's actively manned by Riften guards, who have their own little camp set up and hang around the border on watch. It seems like they also caught an Imperial soldier, but he's not alive anymore. They also keep Skyrim safe from these added dirt hoppers. On the Morrowind side, there is again an area for refugees and bedrolls and knapsacks, and you can see the huge mushrooms grow in the environment. Quaint Borders is simple and sweet, all around well thought and implemented mod with good design, and I don't see a reason for this mod to be so little known. If you liked what you saw, go show it and the rest of the mods showcase today some love if you enjoy them in your game. But wait! There is still one tiny mod left in the list. A once notable settlement called Granite Hill was originally planned to add it to Skyrim, but was ultimately cut before the game's release. It's even briefly mentioned in the game's dialogue. Hence, here we have Granite Hill Massacred, a mod that adds Granite Hill to the game in the crossroads of White Run Tundra, right next to the Great Hens Resurrection Dragon Mound. As the place is absolutely trashed and mostly abandoned, there are just a couple of ruined farmhouses and everything seems quiet, apart from a Falkreath guard patrolling about. You can see the imposing Fort Sun Guard in the distance and just breathe the fresh tundra air, taking in the history of the settlement. The most important place here is Granite Hall, a building which triples as an inn, a crypt and the guards' barracks. Here you can find some friendly NPCs to talk to and maybe rent a room for the night, maybe trade some things before continuing your journeys. Downstairs, in the crypt, lies the former residents of the settlement who suffered a painful fate. Compared to the other Granite Hill mods, I think this one is the best for a Vanilla Plus experience and a nice and simple lore-friendly addition to your game, not to even mention criminally underrated with only 300 downloads. Thank you for watching the video! I know a lot of people are super busy right now playing Starfield, which is again a club which I don't yet belong to, sadly, but I hope there's still time for your dose of scary mods. If you'd like to support the channel and help me create more videos, check out the BCG Patreon for ways to support and see exclusive posts and videos. A huge shout out to my Tavern's legendary patrons, Star095, Ryan Ulrich, and Timofey for going above and beyond. And a big hearty thank you to all of my fellow Bards College graduates and Tavern patrons as well. The mod links can be found in the description box below, as well as my tech specs and a link to my mod list if you're curious. Let me know what you thought about today's mods in the comments, and see ya!